Hi, and welcome to another edition of Further Westbound, our continuing documentary on jazz guitar genius Wes Montgomery. Way back in 2019, we had already sat down with Wes's widow, Serene Montgomery Woods, and we were starting to line up musicians. And the first one who said yes and was on tour at the time was Lee Rittenauer. And Lee has so many connections to Wes Montgomery. He met him. That's certainly a, an important part as, as Lee's career was just beginning. Um, also, uh, he was so inspired by Wes, as we showed in the documentary, that he named his son Wes. And Wes Rittenauer has toured with Lee as a drummer. Uh, so anyway, there, there are other connections, too. But that's what we're going to explore here in this episode. As Robert Montgomery sat down with Lee as he was touring, he was in Virginia in 2019 in the fall. So enjoy this episode of Further Westbound. So where were you when you first started, actually started playing guitar? Well, I'm from Los Angeles, right? And born and raised. And, uh, you know, my dad was and, and mom were from the uh, outside of Detroit. They were from okay. the, the Dearborn area. And... Uh, and so my my dad uh he was his he was a little his health wasn't the greatest when he was in his early 20s so they they wanted to get some sunshine in their life gotcha, gotcha. and so they moved to la and um and uh, that's where i grew up and and i just took to the my dad was an amateur piano player and mm -hmm. wanted to be a pro his parents didn't really want him to do that so they right, kind of pushed right. him away from it so when i showed an interest my dad just like opened the, helped open the doors you know and uh so i started playing when i was eight and when i was about i think 11 i started getting uh, i started to hear i think he was playing a lot of well, they, my parents were always playing Ray Charles and yeah. Lena Horne and Peggy Lee right. and all the stuff of the day, mm -hmm. you know, and Nat King Cole and and some Errol Gardner and and uh, Stan Canton in the house. And so so we, we went up to the local music store and said, I think we should get some jazz records. Okay. And so the, the fellow at the store said, well, these are the guys I recommend, Wes Montgomery and Howard Roberts and Joe Pass and Barney Kessel. Why don't you pick three of the records. So one of the records that, that got my attention was Bumpin'. Yeah, so I was, I think, 11. And then the other one was Howard Roberts, which he was a local. He wasn't as famous as the others, but incredible jazz guitarist as well and a studio musician. Oh, right. So he he was the dog. And then the other one I had heard about was Joe Pass. Yeah. So I brought those three records home and your dad's uh, record just the, he always had that sound, you know, yeah, and you. and that sound that, you know, that even Kenny Burrell and Jim Hall and some of the other guys, Tal Farlow and Barney, it, it was an incredible time for jazz guitar. And but your dad was at the top of the heap there and and um, it, it, his sound just bounced off the vinyl, you know, and I said, wow, what is that? You know, so I was immediately trying. Also, I always had kind of rhythm in my my life, you know, and and uh, at the same time that that I was listening to rock and roll and jazz and the popular music of the day, uh, Motown was coming. So that my sister was playing Motown records in the other room. And so one ear was going here and one ear was going there. And, and Wes always had this, this rhythmic nature, you know, that was more rhythmic than some of the guys, you know, and, and that always attracted me as well. So, so I, I mean, I took to all those guys, you know, it was a yeah. great time to be learning guitar. Right, right, right. You know? So, uh, you know, when I when I hear you speak about that, did was his an, his approach to it a main influence for you? Because it was octave, so well the octaves were just. I mean, it was a big part of it, but it was just part of it because Wes had this ability. His improvisations were like an improvement on the melody. Mm -hmm. You know, he was always melodic, and so. I could relate to that too, you know, it was just like, so the sound, the the rhythm, the originality, the approach, you know, the and his tone and, and just his his warmth and soul, you know, it, 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 it all those things totally came through on his records in live playing. Right, and my right. dad took me to finally hear him play live at a club that was very close to my house. Uh, at the time, I grew up in, in what's called the South Bay in this area, nice area called Palos Verdes, south of south of the LAX, 
and and so there was it was a great time for jazz clubs in LA. I don't know what happened after, but <laughs> <laughs> but there was the lighthouse, and then uh, concerts by the sea, and there was Shelley's Manhole, and there was Dante's and the Baked Potato, and all these places. And so the the lighthouse was very close. So your dad used to play there. Yeah. And um, so I think I was about fourteen when I I first uh, first went and heard him play. And at the time that it's the club's still there. It's more of a blues bar now, but and it's like a cigar shape and and the, um, the 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 bar was here and the bandstand was there like 15 feet away and and i could sit right at the bar because in those days they let the kids sit there okay and and so i could sit at the bar and 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 be you know have it be close to your dad and um and it just blew me away i think i, I saw him twice there and maybe once at shelley's yeah yeah you know it's funny really so many guys that he you know really made an impression on never got to see him. yes that's right you know yeah no i was lucky your your sister one of your sister i forget which one she francis went, francis when we did the hollywood bowl tribute yeah that's right to you your know. dad and joe pass had just passed away and they brought in mundell Lowe and um george benson was there and uh my record westbound and dedicated to your, mm -hmm. your dad had come out the year before or no yeah just a few months before and so we do this uh this concert and she's there and and uh for some reason i tell her the story about the lighthouse and i was 14 and met your dad and got a, a signature and and uh and she said oh he, he spoke about that he remembers that and i said yeah right he doesn't remember that you know it's like <laughs> i was 14 i was nobody and uh and she said, no, but that was it. There weren't too many young kids, and you probably looked even younger than you were. And I said, yeah, well, that's a nice, it's a nice thought. <laughs> but you know, he, he was, you would be surprised at things that he talked about and remembered and, uh, and he would bring up. So, you know, he may have said that. Um, it's funny because um, that was when you, you had Wes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. You yeah, know? yeah. Yeah. And uh, so that that year, 1993, I was making uh, the album dedicated to, to Wes, your dad. And and uh, my wife, Carmen, was pregnant and uh, we were having a baby boy. And, and the only thing that was on my mind, you know, was Wes, Wes, Wes. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. and so it was really easy to name him when he <laughs> when he came. So I said, yeah, well, that that's the ultimate uh, dedication and compliment. You know, that's an honor to us. Uh, yeah. We, Accept that with the humblest. Ah, uh, no, no. that you named your son Wes. No, no, it, it, the honor's all mine. You know, I remember. I actually remember you talking to my mom back. Oh uh, yeah, right. Yeah, I was. I was actually in town, and I was sitting there when you were talking to her. That's right. Ah. Oh. And she got off, and she was like, "That was Lee Rittenow." I said, "Wait a minute, that was who?" She said, "That was Lee Rittenow." I said, "No kidding." She said, "Yeah, he's doing this this album about your dad." I said, really, Mom? And then we sat down and discussed it. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Where does, if you were, I wouldn't say on a measuring stick, where would you put my dad as far as guitarist and legends? Oh, my goodness. Well, I mean, we, we, we can make the list a short one. You know, he's, he's right at the top. He's Because, you know, it was an incredible era of, the, that was the era of the guitar that your dad was in you know he, he it was the transition from well first you know before before the whole jazz guitar period there was the blues and the roots of it, all of it you know and you know you obviously you had the history of all the blues guys and 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 Johnny Hooker and of course then and Robert King and and then BB really popularized it you know and and of course he he was one of the most amazing guys out there ever to, as well and so there was there was bb on the blues and 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 johnny hook and there was your your dad and then along the little side of your dad there was joe pass and bernie kessel and jim hall and tal farlow and i mean the list and howard roberts the list goes on and on kenny burrell of course and then on the rock here comes Jimi hendrix and and jeff beck and and uh, all these great rock guitar players and on the classical you had the maybe the greatest one of all segovia right. and in the, the flamenco you had sabicus you know and then you had the big folk movement on the guitar with all the singer songwriters it was like and, and and chet atkins and all the country guys it was it was like every field 
of guitar was was incredible that period you know mm-hmm. but your dad was just a um, just a stand out <laughs> i used to kind of laugh as a kid because you know you you'd hear all these amazing guys joe passed cuz i took lessons from him it, joe would kind of complain a little bit about wes he said he's he's too good <laughs> he's too good God. and he'd kind of cuss god damn it you know <laughs> And Kenny was kind of almost the same way, but Kenny was a little more competitive, you know, mm-hmm. and because uh, they were kind of taking up the same space sometimes, you yeah, know. Yeah. And uh, but they they all loved each other, I think, and it was a it was a great uh, period of of jazz guitar. But you know, speaking of Segovia and Hendrix and and BB and and your dad, mm-hmm. and, uh, again, it's a and Chet Atkins and a few others that I'm leaving out. It's a very short list, you know. He's up there, you know. What Coltrane is to the saxophone, West Montgomery is to the guitar. Wonderful. Notice how Lee kept that guitar with him the whole time that he was talking uh, to Robert Montgomery. The guitar was always present and always warming up, doing little exercises, that sort of thing. Fascinating to see a musician right before showtime. That was before he went up to do his sound check. Is when he talked with us. So pretty cool. Uh, further episodes on Further Westbound, we're going to start talking about Buddy and Monk, Wes's two brothers, from people who knew them well. So that's in addition to other musicians that we're going to continue to introduce you to. And we'll go back to some as well, uh, who we've already heard from a couple of times with some of the material we still haven't used. So hope you're enjoying Further Westbound. And if you do, don't forget to subscribe doesn't cost you anything. They don't even ask for an email address. Until next time, thanks for watching.